okay so today we'll be studying about the metamorphic rocks so these are one of the rocks from the uh, three categories that is igneous uh, sedimentary and metamorphic so the term metamorphic uh, means the rocks which have been formed by the chemical agents heats and temperature these are the uh, agents of metamorphisms which uh, bring about the structural and uh, mineralogical changes in the uh, pre-existing rocks so the rock might be an igneous rock sediment rock or a metamorphic rocks which are subjected to this agents of metamorphisms that is the heat temperature and uh, uh, pressure along with the chemical chemically active fluids so they will be undergoing the changes that is their structural changes uh, orientation and mineralogical changes so a new product of rock will be formed that will be known as the metamorphic rock okay so uh, metamorphic rocks are formed by various types okay so the first one here we are going to study is about the regional metamorphism in regional metamorphism this is the metamorphism that takes place on a larger scale the area which will be extended in this uh, type of metamorphism will be having some large area of uh, uh, large area so as it is covering a large area it is known as the regional metamorphism so here the important agent of metamorphism that is involved is called as the pressure okay so here pressure is the important agent which brings about the changes in the pre-existing rocks uh, wherein the orientation of the mineral grains or the crystals will be taking place in the direction of the pressure which is applied and along with this a uh, temperature will also be playing a vital role but as compared to the pressure temperature will be of less uh, uh, temperature will be of less magnitude so this is uh, a metamorphism where the pressure plays an important role so the second type of metamorphism which we'll be studying in the year is the contact metamorphism so contact metamorphism is a metamorphism where the temperature or the heat plays an important role so uh, here in where a pre-existing rock is there so in that pre-existing rock if a magmatic intrusion takes place so if there is a magmatic intrusion in a pre-existing rock so definitely the pre-existing rock uh, will be undergoing some metamorphic changes that is the at the contact type of the uh, magmatic intrusion and the pre-existing rocks there will be a mineral deformation or the mineral uh, will be uh, changed there will be some structural changes some different kinds of minerals will be formed they will be undergoing some different orientations so as there is a contact uh, here occurring between the uh, pre-existing rocks and the magmatic intrusion so this kind of metamorphism is called as the contact metamorphism so here in this kind of metamorphism the heat plays an important role so pressure is also uh, present but pressure is a secondary agent in this kind of metamorphism so metamorphism by pressure so what do you think uh, causes enough pressure of metamorphose miles of a rock okay so here is an image where in a pre-existing rock which is known as the protolith will be undergoing some kind of uh, structural deformation will be undergoing some kind of structural deformation reorientation of the grains will be taking place uh, where the grains in the rocks that is the metamorphic rocks which has been formed after will be uh, having some reorientation where you can see in the first diagram here uh, that is in the figure a the grains which are present for example if you consider this one as the rock granite so here you can see the mineral grains are somewhat uh, angular to subangular rounded in uh, appearance okay so those might be the minerals of course um, along with the uh, feldspars which are the essential minerals of the granite okay so this same granite uh, composition that is the mineral composition will be undergoing uh, metamorphism so that there the grains will be oriented in the direction of the pressure okay so as we have studied in the previous class the pressure is of two types that is uniform pressure and directed pressure okay so here the uniform pressure is a pressure which acts from equal sides okay the pressure which is acting equally from all the sides that is all the four sides is known as the uniform pressure so after that we are having the directed pressure the pressure which is acting wherein the uh, in the direction of pressure okay so if for example if the direction is from top and bottom so definitely that is the direction where the mineral grains will get reoriented or for example the mineral grains if they are getting uh, 
or having some pressure which is applied from the side that is from the right and left side uh, so at that place the grains will get reoriented in the direction of the pressure so here what we want to say is that as the pressure is applied on that uh, mineral grains which are present in the protolith of the pre-existing rocks they will be going some uh, structural deformation which will be seen in the metamorphic rocks they will be becoming somewhat flattened so you can see here in this diagram there is uh, one thing that has been shown the original mineral grains of quartz has been taken as an example wherein the this is a quartz mineral you can consider it is a quartz mineral of the rock protolith for example it might be a granite so the quartz mineral is about uh, angular to sub angular or rounded in shape it is having some kind of shape that is when there is no agent of metamorphism that is pressure for example if it is not acting on that one the grain is somewhat angular to sub angular or rounded in shape but when the pressure acts on this one it will be undergoing some structural deformation that is what it has been shown in the uh, diagram that is present at the bottom that is it has become flattened in the direction of the pressure which has been applied in this case the pressure is up, uh, getting applied from the top and the bottom so definitely if the pressure is applied on any rounded uh, object in this case it is a course so definitely it will start becoming flattened or it will become uh, somewhat uh, what has been shown in this uh, figure so uh, this is what the pressure does to a rock that is a protolith when it is undergoing metamorphism so here is an another example <coughs> where they have shown a rock that is for example it is an igneous rock diorite which is consisting of the minerals amphibole, plagioclase, feldspar, quartz, and randomly they are oriented in this uh, image that is in this rock. So definitely this is the protolith. So if the same rock is subjected to pressure and temperature, definitely we know that it is going to undergo some kind of uh, structural deformation with the help of heat and pressure. So when this igneous rock is subjected to the agents of metamorphism a metamorphic uh, rock is been formed so you can see the light and the dark bands have been uh, got uh, segregated uh, means have got separated that some of the light bands they have accumulated at a particular side and some of the dark bands they have accumulated at the particular side okay so there is definitely differentiation which is uh, actually seen here so that is what it is been uh, seen when a pressure and heat is going to act on the pre-existing rock or the protolith so we are going to get a, some kind of different rock which is known as a metamorphic equivalent of that pre-existing rock so metamorphism by pressure pressure often causes realignment of the intergrown mineral grains for example whatever minerals are present in the uh, protolith once they are acted uh, or subjected to pressure they will start getting reoriented and that is what it has been shown in this particular image as well what we have discussed in the previous slides uh, which are present before this so what actually happens here they have been getted reoriented in the form of bands or in the form of foliage okay so these bands are actually seen whenever metamorphic uh, uh, rock that is knees for example if you take knees so there will be uh, seen some kinds of light and dark bands uh, consisting of the uh, minerals for example if you speak about the light colored minerals so those will be consisting of the cords and the pulse part if you consider of the dark colored minerals so that might be some amphiboles some biotides okay so they will be getting reoriented and that was uh, that is what it has been shown in these two diagrams on the left hand side and the right hand side in the form of foliations and in the form of banding okay so here you can see an image or a rock uh, which has been uh, undergone metamorphism it has been undergone metamorphism and definitely the bands have been separated now okay so you can see the light colored bands which are rich in uh, false parts and cords they have got separated then after that you are having some dark colored bands which are rich in your amphiboles and biotides they have got separated again so you can see there is some kind of light and dark colored banding which is occurring in this kind of rocks so this is also uh, 
a case when the uh, rock that is a metamorphic rocks uh, which we see that is a parent rock that is a protolith when it is subjected to a pressure usually in seen in the original metamorphism the bands get reoriented and uh, this is what it actually looks in reality. So this is the foliation. These foliations um, are nothing but the layering of the uh, mica rich minerals. For example, if you speak about the muscoite, these are the light colored uh, platy flaky minerals which you are seeing. Uh, those are the mica belonging to the mica group of minerals. So here they will be getting layered upon each other and you will be seeing some kind of foliations or, or folii to be speaking about the single uh, layer so that is known as folia and this process is known as the foliation takes place the layering of this mica rich minerals will be uh, taking place one above the other so this is whenever you are seeing any kind of cyst that will be rich in your uh, mica minerals it might be a biotite mica or it might be a muscovite mica so that will be definitely giving some shiny uh, shiny color uh, of appearance so that entire thing is known as the process of foliations usually seen in the uh, metamorphic rocks that are the cysts. So this is again a horizontal section wherein you can see thin layers of uh, this uh, minerals has been deposited one above the other. So they have formed a layer. You can see the layer one and layer two. For example, if you speak about the layers, two layers are there. They have been separated by each other with the help of uh, <coughs> foliations. Okay, and this rock will be rich in your uh, micas. So that will be giving you that shiny appearance. So regional metamorphism. Here regional metamorphism, as we have uh, discussed, regional metamorphism occurs on a large scale. Okay, so where does it occur? It occurs actually at the site of mountain building where one plate is uh, coming and uh, colliding with the other or one plate is going under that is at this zone of subduction so that will be the region where the metamorphism will be uh, that is the regional metamorphism will be occurring okay so the, here the area which is involved is of large magnitude so this kind of mag uh, metamorphism takes on a large scale so it is known as a regional metamorphism so you can see there is a two plates are there they are getting uh, collided with each other and at the middle there is a mountain wherein uh, rocks have been formed so here the rocks which are found uh, will be undergoing a regional type of metamorphism so that is what the pressure does whenever a rock has been subjected uh, to pressure and it will be definitely forming some different kinds of uh, minerals and the minerals will get reoriented in the direction of the pressure so this is again another slide which is showing large scale metamorphism that is you can see here that is on the right hand side there is an undeformed strata if you consider this one as the sedimentary strata the in sedimentary we have studied it is a layering of the rocks one above the other <coughs> so wherein the layers uh, are deposited that is the older at the bottom and the younger at the top they will be deposited one above the other and definitely at the bottom the rock becomes more and more compacted and which will be giving rise for the formation of the sedimentary rocks so that is what a normal sedimentary process looks like or it is also known as the stratification so for this particular rock that is the undeformed strata which is present on the right hand side if you see uh, that is actually the right hand side if you see if it is subjected to pressure which is acting from side to side that is a differential stress or it is also known as the directed pressure so definitely this layers will undergo deformation they will be undergoing deformation in the direction of the pressure and you will be seeing that um, some kind of different metamorphic uh, rocks will be formed for example if you are seeing uh, limestone if limestone is present in this area it will be giving you the equivalent metamorphic rock that is a marble if a sandstone is present it will be giving a metamorphic equivalent rock that is uh, corzos uh, so after that this is the confining pressure which they have shown on the left hand side that is confining pressure is a pressure which is acting from all the direction and equal amount of pressure has been applied from all the direction so definitely that pressure is known as a confining pressure and another which is acting from side to side that one is known as the differential pressure so now we'll be studying about the metamorphism by heat or it is also known as uh, contact metamorphism 
metamorphism by heat so for example if you are having a pre existing rock uh, so in that pre existing rock if there is a mat magmatic intrusion that happens so definitely magmatic intrusion will be taking up or dissolving some part of it uh, for some part of that uh, metam pre existing rock definitely so once the ma magma gets uh, cooled down so at the contact of this pre existing rock and the magmatic intrusion the rock will be <coughs> undergoing some kind of metamorphism where in uh, the minerals uh, will be forming to a metamorphic category so there definitely as the rock that is pre existing rock is coming in contact with the intruded magma so there is a contact between this intruded magma and the pre existing rock so that kind of uh, there where new metamorphic rocks are formed at that contact so those are known as the uh, contact metamorphism or that process is known as the contact metamorphism so here you can see this is an uh, diagram which is showing uh, that a pre existing rock is there that is unaltered rock also as they have shown in this diagram so definitely from the bottom there is an igneous intrusion which is uh, taking place so a part of that unaltered rock uh, when the magmatic intrusion has taken place it has totally eaten up or it has totally dissolved that metamorphic uh, uh, that pre existing rock so definitely at the contact of this unaltered rock and this magmatic intrusion there will be some rocks which has been uh, there will be some part of this pre existing rock there will be some part of this pre existing rock which will be undergoing uh, metamorphism so that contact is known as or that process is known as the contact metamorphism so it is also known as the thermal metamorphism creates big rock for example you are having hornfels are the better examples of this uh, contact metamorphism uh, rocks okay so here you can see another thing that that, that is there is a magmatic intrusion that is uh, present that is a hot magma has been shown in this diagram so the hot magma is present or it has been shown in the red color that is a deep red color it has been shown and at the contact of this pre existing rock and this uh, hot magma there is a zone or there is a layer which has been shown in a light uh, orange color so at that light orange color this rocks has undergone metamorphism so here when you see such kind of thing happening in any kind of uh, pre existing rock wherein magmatic intrusion brings about the uh, metamorphism so this kind of metamorphism is known as the contact metamorphism so here is another uh, example of the same thing so there is a magma chamber uh, and above that you are having some of the volcanoes which are present so definitely whenever a magma chamber the volcano magmatic intrusion takes place so definitely at the side of that there will be some of the pre existing rocks so at the contact of this pre existing rocks and the magma chamber there are some of the uh, metamorphic rocks also which will be formed so these are uh, usually seen <coughs> formed under the surface so whenever this uh, weathering activity and all those things takes place then definitely those will be uh, brought up to the surface and we can see what thing has been happened in the past uh, so this is what it has been shown in this diagram also and if you remember this we are wherein we studied about the uh, igneous uh, rocks so uh, there also we have seen some of the uh, igneous rock forms that is intrusion and extrusion also forms here like uh, yeah, like your lacolith la lopolith uh, facolith all those things that is extrusion intrusion concordant discordant all those things so contact metamorphism igneous intrusions where molten rock is forced between existing rocks that is what this statement is uh, saying they tend to bake a part of the pre existing rocks and those rocks where in uh, the contact is there they get metamorphosed so here you can see uh, a chart where in with the help of uh, the depth the temperature is also increasing 
and for example on the top surface at a depth of 0 to 5 uh, kilometers if the rock is of clay that is sedimentary rock if the, it is a clay so definitely clay if it is getting compacted and cemented so definitely it will be converted to shale and definitely shale when it is still more up uh, pressure and temperature is applied the mineral grains which are present in the shale will start getting more and more oriented to each other or get oriented in the direction of the pressure so it will be converted to a next uh, metamorphic rock that is the metamorphic equivalent of uh, shale is nothing but a slate so when the same slate when it has been uh, push deep inside deep inside the earth's crust for example here in this diagram it has been shown it has been uh, pushed to a depth of 10 to 15 kilometers and a pressure of 400 to 600 degrees celsius is occurring on this uh, shale so definitely a new metamorphic equivalent uh, which will be more uh, compacted more compacted and different mineral grains will be uh, seen to occurring in that one it will be formed that is known as the phyllite so in this cycle the next rock that is cyst is present the same phyllite when it is subjected to a uh, depth of 20 to 25 kilometers and a pressure of same that is uh, more than uh, 500 degrees celsius so at that time you will be seeing the phyllite will be converted to cyst wherein the cyst uh, you will be seeing some of the mica rich uh, minerals like muscoite or biotites are going to get formed in this one okay so last after this there will be uh, if this same cyst has been pushed deep inside uh, to a depth of uh, 27 or 28 kilometers so definitely it will be subject to a temperature of about 600 degrees celsius so at that time this schist will be uh, converted to a uh, gneiss gneiss is nothing but a metamorphic equivalent of igneous rock uh, that is the granite so here it has been shown in this diagram that uh, from the clay uh, it has been converted to gneiss and what the temperature and pressure when they are acting together they are uh, doing it has been uh, seen that is from clay it has been converted to shale it has been converted to slate it has been converted to phyllite cyst and gneiss and if the temperature keeps on uh, going on and on and on so definitely at that time uh, it will be getting uh, melted that is the gneiss will be getting melted as we have studied the metamorphism occurs uh, in a temperature range from 250 degrees celsius to somewhat 700 or 800 degrees celsius if the rock is subjected to a lot of uh, temperature beyond this 700 or 800 degrees celsius it will be getting melted so once it is melted it will be undergoing that uh, uh, rock cycle formation that is uh, magma will be formed from this um, melted rock it will be getting erupted to the surface or under the surface and at that time it will be uh, coming in contact with the atmosphere and again the igneous rock will be formed from which the sedimentary rocks metamorphic rocks and all those things will be forming again so it will be again going in the form of this rock cycle so this is what that has been shown in this uh, increasing degree of metamorphism so here with the help of uh, this image it has been shown that is first rock what we studied it was a slate from slate we are not having any kind of uh, minerals you are having some kind that is shale as you have studied in the sedimentary shales are nothing but your rocks sedimentary rocks which are belonging to the argillaceous category wherein the rock grain size is uh, uh, less than 1 upon 16 mm so definitely in that rock that is the uh, slates uh, sedimentary equivalent is nothing but a uh, shale so there you can see it is very fine in nature and also in this uh, metamorphic equivalent that is a slate you are not going to see any kind of uh, um, grains so definitely no grains are seen here but this same uh, slate which is subjected to even more pressure and temperature uh, that is having pushed uh, deep inside the earth's crust it is going to get converted to a flight so definitely from flight uh, if it is still getting pushed to more depth and temperature pressure is going to also increase so it will be getting converted to cyst you can see the orientation of these grains are getting changed so what metamorphism actually does is it changes the orientation or there will be structural changes in the mineral grains of the pre-existing rock or the protolith okay so here you can see in the slate 
the pressure was less and the temperature was also less. The orientation is somewhat uh, horizontal in nature or you can say the mineral kinetics are somewhat parallel in nature. But as the temperature and pressure are increasing or if the rock is pushed deep inside the earth crust more and more, so definitely more amount of pressure is going to act and definitely it will be resulting in the deformation of this mineral grains. So that is what happening in this flight. So if it is going still more uh, under uh, uh, pressure and temperature and subjected or pushed deep inside the earth's crust, at that time the mineral grains will be getting uh, segregated or they will be getting uh, separated. The lighter ones will be separated at one place, the darker ones start accumulating at another place. Uh, so in this cyst, it will be a zone wherein the you will be seeing the mica rich minerals. So after this, you can see the last stage that the formation of this uh, niche that is you can see clear um, light and dark bands which has been formed. So light bands as we know are nothing but rich in your cords and feldspar content and dark bands are the minerals which are rich in your amphibole group of minerals. So apart from that you might be having some of the biotite rich minerals also. So example for this one is an niche. So it needs uh, more and more temperature and pressure. So definitely it is formed at uh, a greater depth deep inside the earth's crust. So that is what it has been shown actually in this schematic diagram. So composition of the metamorphic rock is determined by the condition of metamorphis uh, metamorphism. So what is the condition of metamorphism? So again you are going to see what is the amount of pressure and temperature the pre-existing rock or the protolith has been subjected to. Okay, So if the uh, temperature and pressure amount is more definitely you are going to see some high grade of metamorphic minerals going to form and uh, which will be seen usually to occur in some of the high grade metamorphic rocks as well. Okay, So apart from that the mineral composition will be depending on the parent rock itself. So we have studied parent rock is nothing but also called as the protolith uh, in this metamorphic uh, petrology. So it is an original rock which will be subjected to your pressure on temperature. So these two factors will be deciding what will be the composition of the metamorphic rocks and how it is determined. So here you can see that is uh, when great amount of heat and pressure has been applied for example in this case they have taken a limestone small crystals of limestones are present as you have seen in the sedimentary petrology limestone is nothing but belonging to the chemically formed uh, sediment rocks or it is also called as the non-plastic sedimentary rocks. So here you can see whenever this limestone has been subjected to a large amount of pressure and temperature it will be resulting in its metamorphic equivalent that is it is known as the marble. Okay, So the mineral composition in this will be same as that of uh, limestone that is the composition of the marble. The crystals will be uh, large enough but the composition will be same as of that of the parent rock or it is also known as the protolith. So this is one example. So one more is there uh, which we have studied in the grade of metamorphism that is shale. Shale is an argillaceous sedimentary rock. So if it is subjected to uh, more amount of uh, pressure and temperature it will be getting converted to a metamorphic equivalent of that one that is known as the slate. Okay. So in this example the mineral is shale actually getting changed into another uh, um, minerals during metamorphosis. Okay, some metamorphic rocks can form from several different parent rocks. Okay, so here they have told that some metamorphic rocks can form from several different parent rocks. For example, knees may be formed from a sandstone also or it might be formed from a shale or a granite okay so in this case what they have tried to tell is there are three parent rocks from which the knees can be formed so first one it might get formed from the sandstone also but in previous classes we have st uh, studied whenever a sandstone is undergoing a metamorphism it is going to give a um, uh, metamorphic rock equivalent that is known as the cords uh, okay so after that shale 
or it might be formed from the granite also. So when these three parent rocks that is a sandstone, shale or a granite are exposed to a high amount or intense level of pressure and temperature, so definitely they can be forming a metamorphic rock that is a gneiss. Okay? So here apart from the granite, you should keep in mind a gneiss that is a metamorphic rock can also be formed from another two sedimentary rocks that is uh, one is the arenaceous category that is the sandstone and one more is the argillaceous category of uh, sedimentary rock that is known as the um, shale. Okay? So this map shows uh, two sections of uh, or this image or table shows two section of uh, metamorphic rocks with accordance to the texture that is one is the foliated rocks and one is the non foliated rocks. So what are foliated rocks? The foliated rocks are nothing but the rocks which are having some kind of layering which are known as the foliage. Okay, when you are seeing that layering or foliage present in that, those are known as the foliated rocks wherein the minerals get aligned in the direction of the pressure. So here they have converted it or divided them that is in the foliated section they have divided them into another two types that is banding okay that is the banding and one more is the mineral alignment okay. So here they have, they have divided them according to the grain size okay one is the fine fine to medium and medium to coarse. Okay, so what is the mineral composition of this particular minerals, uh, particular uh, rocks that is a foliated metamorphic rocks. So it might be consisting of mica, quartz, feldspars, amphiboles, granite, garnet and pyroxenes. Okay, whenever you are, you are seeing a foliated rock, so it might be consisting not always in all the condition you will be seeing or compulsory you will be seeing this kind of uh, mineral composition or minerals will be present in that particular rock. But uh, most of the cases these minerals are definitely going to be seen to occur in that uh, foliated group of metamorphic rocks. So when these particular minerals are subjected to regional metamorphism wherein the metamorphism takes place on a larger scale wherein heat and uh, pressure are uh, going to play their important role. So you are going to see some kind of uh, metamorphic rocks like uh, slate, phyllite, cyst, nice. Okay, slate, phyllite, cyst, nice. Those are going to get formed. And what will the mineral composition in this particular rocks? It will be same. That is, we are going to see minerals like uh, mica, minerals like quartz, minerals from uh, feldspar group, amphibole group, garnet group, pyroxene group. So this all group minerals are going to uh, seeing to occur in the metamorphic rocks like slate, phyllites is nice. So another category of this uh, metamorphic rock is the non foliated metamorphic rocks. So again on based on the grain size they have been divided into fine that is very fine then fine to coarse, coarse and all those things. Okay. So what is the composition of that one? This might be rich in carbon, various minerals, quartz, calcite, dolomite. Okay. So here you can see uh, in most of the cases you are going to see calcite or some calcium carbonate rich minerals. Okay. So when this kind of uh, uh, minerals are present or non foliated rocks they undergo uh, regional metamorphism or they might also undergo contact metamorphism or they might also undergo regional and contact metamorphism together. Okay. So, whenever you are having a fine grain metamorphic rocks so example for that one you can take uh, coal okay so coal is nothing but uh, a variety of uh, sedimentary rock itself where in uh, it has been formed from the uh, formation uh, or decomposition of this uh, woody uh, material that is the uh, woods which were uh, by getting deposited at the time of Gondwana age and has been deep buried inside the earth's crust they were subjected to temperature and pressure that has given rise for the formation of the coal okay so the starting phase of the coal formation we know it is starts from the peat and goes up as the grade of metamorphism increases and the coal's metamorphic equivalent is known as the bituminous coal okay so here we can see um, 
it has been undergoing even more amount of uh, metamorphism and the final stage of coal will be reached which will be known as the anthracite coal okay so they will be seeing the density will be less as the warm moisture of that particular uh, coal for coal variant will be getting evaporated because it has been subjected to a lot of pressure pressure and temperature okay so there the carbon content in that particular rock will also start getting increased so it will be having some shiny luster as well and it will be burning with a blue flame so that is what this anthracite coal variety uh, stands for okay so after that you are having some of the uh, fine variety that is uh, various rocks changed by heat and magma so for example this is an contact metamorphism which they have shown uh, in this particular uh, table so where in magma is intruded and definitely at the contact of the pre existing rock and the intruded magma there will be some kind of metamorphism which will the rock uh, undergoing that is the pre existing rock will be undergoing some kind of metamorphism at that contact so again that is known as the contact metamorphism so example for this one is the hornfels so hornfels are the rocks which are formed by the uh, contact metamorphism so after that you are having again cores composition is there so after that if this uh, particular uh, sediment rock that is a sandstone if it is subjected uh, uh, subjected to a metamorphism so it will be converted to its metamorphic equivalent that is the quartzite so definitely after that you are having some of the non clastic rocks for example if you are speaking about the limestones and dolomite they will be converted to its metamorphic equivalents that is its marble here you have to keep in mind what is the parent composition min parent mineral parent rocks mineral composition it will be having the same composition in the metamorphic equivalent as well it will be undergoing some kind of structural changes and mineral orientation will be different as compared to the protolith or the parent rock apart from that remaining mineral composition and the chemical composition is will be same it will not be altered so after that you are having some of the coarser uh, grains mm, wherein you are going to see some uh, sedimentary equivalents uh, such as the conglomerate when this conglomerate has been subjected to the pressure and temperature definitely conglomerates are consisting of the class which are having size more than 2 mm and they will be uh, getting uh, pressed at the direction of the pressure if they are acting from the top and bottom so definitely the uh, class will be getting becoming more and more flat so a term meta has been added um, before that which is a prefix so it is known as a, whenever a conglomerate is undergoing metamorphism uh, so a metamorphic equivalent of that one is known as a meta conglomerate okay wherein in the conglomerate the uh, class where whose size was more than 2 mm they were somewhat rounded or sub uh, rounded in shape but in this meta conglomerate they will be becoming a little bit flat because a lot of pressure has been acted on them and that is what metamorphism does actually for that particular rock so here when a sandstone is subjected to heat uh, and pressure it becomes so these are some of the questions so whenever a sandstone has been subjected to heat and pressure we know what it becomes it becomes a quartzite okay so it becomes a quartzite so sandstone is nothing but a sedimentary rock that is classically formed so when this rock is still more undergoing pressure and temperature sub, uh, or it is getting subjected to more and more pressure and temperature it is going to get converted to its metamorphic equivalent that is known as the quartzite so for example that was a clastic rock that is sandstone for now if you speak about um, a non clastic rock that is uh, chemically formed that is if a marble is undergoing um, metamorphism so sorry uh, for example a limestone is undergoing metamorphism it will be forming or getting converted to a marble so here is marble a foliated or non foliated metamorphic rock so what do you think about this so definitely uh, marble is a non foliated rocks because it has been formed from its uh, sedimentary equivalent that is sedimentary rock that is nothing but your limestone limestone is non clastic rock which is formed by chemical process it is not consisting of any kinds of uh, layering layer forming uh, minerals so definitely you are not going to see that properties getting transferred here in its uh, a uh, metamorphic rock that is a marble so definitely it is a non foliated rock so uh, next one name three minerals in cyst 
so cyst as we have studied uh, shows a typical uh, character that is foliations cyst shows foliations so definitely foliations are uh, the unique features of the cyst and cyst show uh, consist of important mineral that is of mica group so one is the biotite one is the muscovite so apart from that you will be seeing some kind of uh, cores in less quantity also occurring in this one so whenever you are seeing uh, the cyst you should keep in mind two minerals that is first is the muscovite and next is the uh, biotite so apart from that in less quantity you can add some feldspars and cores also so uh, what is the only metamorphic rock in your uh, that existing banding okay so here whatever chart which we have we have seen or the table we have seen wherein a uh, banding has taken place so there we can say the uh, rock uh, which has bands so you can give an example of a knees so knees is uh, formed wherein banding of the dark and light bands take place okay so at that time uh, this is showing some nisos structure or nisos texture also you can say when you see a particular rock under a microscope so you can see the banding a uh, metamorphic rock which is having an banding or showing or exhibiting uh, the bands you can give an example of the knees so you should keep in mind in the previous classes we have studied uh, granite okay granite was the parent rock from which this uh, uh, knees was getting formed but here in this uh, ppt they have also told that from a sandstone or a shale um, or a slate okay so when these two uh, rocks that is a sandstone or a shale or a slate this have uh, been subjected to even greater amount of uh, metamorphism wherein the pressure and temperature becomes more and more prominent and they push this particular rocks deep inside the earth crust they are also going to give rise for the formation of this uh, knees okay so uh, here is uh, simple uh, work they have shown that is how to identify rocks so uh, we have to see whether they are consisting of any crystals or no okay so if they are having a crystal so definitely their grain size uh, you will be speaking about the grain size as coarse medium uh, whatever it is okay so if they are consisting of uh, not any crystals so definitely they will be fine in nature so they are further divided them into igneous and metamorphic if they are having crystals so definitely um, they will be uh, categorized into igneous and metamorphic so the term crystal is used when you are studying igneous and metamorphic petrology but when you are studying the sedimentary petrology the term sediment is taken more uh, prominent uh, thing okay because sedimentary rocks are nothing but the rocks which are formed by the formation or the compaction and cementation or the total process known as the lithification of the sediments so your sediments are uh, present so no question of them having any crystals there okay so but in igneous or the metamorphic rocks definitely you are going to see some kind of crystals present so after that this uh, crystals uh, of uh, this igneous and metamorphic rocks has been divided into two types again that is one with the banding and one with the foliations okay so in foliations definitely you are going to see the mica group of minerals like your biotite and muscovite so apart from that when the rock metamorphic rocks with banding you are going to see some uh, uh, minerals like your cores feldspars amphibolite and all those things uh, or amphiboles for example uh, sorry amphiboles uh, existing in this banded um, metamorphic rocks okay so uh, definitely uh, if there is a banding they are known as the banded metamorphic rocks okay so this is what uh, this uh, diagram is showing okay so all the rocks are classified based on how they are formed okay sedimentary rocks as we know they are formed from the compaction and cementation of this uh, sediments that is uh, the sediments of the pre-existing rocks so igneous rocks are formed by the cooling and consolidation of the magma and when this uh, sedimentary rocks igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks also when they are subjected to the agents of metamorphism like uh, pressure temperature and even chemically active fluids there will be undergoing some structural deformation and which will be seen uh, in the form of the metamorphic rocks 
So again, um, I think you remember the rock cycles, how it works. So no need to explain that. Uh, nearly all the rocks are formed other than uh, formed from other rocks. Okay. Ex uh, in the exceptional case for like our coal and uh, fossil limestone. Coal, you know, it has been formed by the uh, decomposition or the deep burying of the uh, wood, okay, woody material, which is rich in uh, uh, moisture content. Uh, so definitely that when it is subjected to some kind of uh, pressure and temperature, which is seen to occur deep inside the earth's crust, it is going to get converted to a more uh, carbon rich form that is known as the coal. So apart from that, uh, rocks are also formed from fossil limestones rocks are also formed from the fossil limestones so here no question comes that is rock cycle is the only cycle which can give rise for the formation of this raw uh, rocks that is the igneous metamorphic and sedimentary but what they are trying to tell you that rocks can also be formed from the uh, biological activity or biochemical activity for example coal is an uh, example of that one or the fossiliferous limestone fossiliferous limestone is nothing but the rock or a limestone which has been formed by the um, shells of the uh, marine or the aquatic uh, uh, lives okay so when these creatures die uh, so they leave their shells which are rich in calcium carbonate so definitely they are going to give rise to the formation of this uh, uh, fossil limestone so uh, some rocks exist for thousands to billions of years before undergoing change okay so here uh, some rocks can also be formed or or they can uh, even withstand for thousands or billions of years uh, actually these are the rocks which are uh, consisting of the minerals which are having more stability um, they are having more stability for the uh, weathering okay if you know the gold is uh, mineral stability so they will be rich in cores for example if you're having cores uh, also it is a slowly weathering mineral or apart from that if you uh, see some minerals uh, like zircon okay you see some uh, minerals like zircon and all those things uh, which is nothing but an heavy mineral uh, the ore is zirconium so definitely it will be consisting uh, of uh, a more endurance to withstand this uh, effect of uh, weathering so they will be staying there for a longer time on the earth and that is how we can identify what is the age of that particular uh, rock or the particular age of that earth can also be studied with the help of such minerals like zircon because it will be consisting of some of the um, uranium isotopes uranium isotopes like uh, uranium 235 which will be getting converted to uranium 207 or uh, getting decayed okay so the daughter element it is known as so apart from that uranium uh, 238 is also there which will be uh, getting decayed or getting converted to lead mm, lead uh, 206 okay so those will be having some kind of half-life period due to or based on which we can identify what is the age of that particular rock or that particular uh, uh, landmass. Okay, we can understand and this is what they have shown in this uh, rock cycle. So uh, this we have studied before starting our petrology itself. Uh, so this is how actually they have, it looks and that is the end of this uh, lecture. So that was just a revision about the metamorphic uh, rocks and thank you.